Hello students, I need to tell you about food taste. When you look at food substances, it's majorly classified into six. Carbohydrates, proteins, fat and oil, vitamins, mineral salts, and water. But this, these classes are grouped into two. One, primary food substances. Primary food substances. Two, welfare food. The primary food substances are required in large quantities in the body. And these are carbohydrates, proteins, fats and oil, and water. Because they are required in large quantities in the body, they are classified as primary food substances. The wealthier food are the ones that are required in small quantities in the body. And these are vitamins and mineral salts. But at this level, when we want to test for food, we only test for carbohydrates, proteins, fat and oil. But in the higher level, you test for vitamins, mineral salts. But at this level, I only want to talk about the test for carbohydrate, test for protein, and test for fat and oil. Number one, test for carbohydrates. When you look at carbohydrates, there are three classes of carbohydrates. One, simple reducing sugars. Simple reducing sugars. that are also known as monosaccharides. Monosaccharides. These are glucose, fructose, and galactose. We call them simple reducing sugars. So when they are talking about simple reducing sugars, they are talking about the glucose, fructose, and galactose. Two, complex reducing sugars, known as disaccharides. And these are sucrose, Maltose and lactose. The reason why they are called complex reducing sugars is because they have two monosaccharides combined together by glucosidic bond. The name of the bond that combine them together, the two monosaccharides, in the Disaccharide is glucosidic bond. Number three, polysaccharides, such as starch, cellulose, and glycogen. Test for simple reducing sugars. 
when to test for simple reducing sugar. Mind you, the simple reducing sugar is talking about monosaccharide. The common simple reducing sugar that is always tested for is glucose. And there are two chemical reagents that can be used to test for simple reducing sugar. Anytime these chemical reagents are mentioned, they are talking about simple reducing sugar. One, failing solution. Failing solutions. When I say failing solution, we have failing solution A and failing solution B, but failing solutions. Two, Benedict solution. So anytime any one of them is mentioned, they are talking about simple reduced sugar. So when you want to test for simple reduced sugar, put two centimeter cube of glucose solution in a test tube and then add few drops drops of failing solution or Benedict solution and then warm. A orange red coloration is found. Please take note of that. When you want to test for food, there are four things you must know. One, you must know the reagent, the chemical reagent, reagent that can be used for that test. You must know the condition of, for that test, maybe it's acidic or neutral or alkaline. You must know the color change after the test. So for simple reducing sugar, the chemical reagent can be failing solution or Benedict solution. And the condition must be neutral. Then the color that is formed is orange red or brick red. Why? It is known that that failing solution that is put in contains copper sulfate. That is, copper sulfate. Because it's a reducing agent. Mind you, these monosaccharides are reducing agents. So the, the copper sulfate that is contained in that failing solution is the one that will be reduced by that simple reduced sugar to copper 1 oxide. It is that copper one oxide that gives the color of orange red or brick red coloration. Test for complex reducing sugar. Mind you, the common reducing sugar that is always used is sucrose. So, likewise, you put two centimeter cube of sucrose solution in the test tube. But you are not going to add failing solution or Benedict solution directly. Because this complex sugar contains two monosaccharides that are combined together by glucosidic bond. So something must be done to this glucosidic bond. So you need to first of all break this glucosidic bond. By the time it is now broken, you are now having two monosaccharides that contain in that complex reducing sugar. It is then that that failing solution or Benedict solution will be added. Now, the first thing you should do is to first of all add dilute hydrochloric acid to that complex reducing sugar. And the main function of that uh, dilute hydrochloric acid is to break. Please take note of that. The reason why dilute hydrochloric acid is added is to break the glucosidic bond that join the two monosaccharides together. Once this bond, glucosidic bond is now broken, it is then that caustic soda will now be added to neutralize the effect of the hydrochloric acid that is added. 
It is then that that failing solution or Benedict solution will be added. It will now give you the color as if you are testing for simple reducing sugar. So when you want to test for complex reducing sugar, the chemical reagents that are required first, dilute hydrochloric acid, second, caustic soda, third, failing solution or Benedict solution. It will now give you the color as if you are testing for simple reducing sugar. The third one is test for starch, which is the polysaccharide. And the main reagent to test for starch is iodine solution. Just put two centimeter cube of starchy solution in a test tube and then add iodine solution. A blue-black coloration is formed. Anytime you want to test for starch and you use iodine solution, the main color that is always formed is blue-black coloration. Let me now move to protein, test for protein. There are three tests for protein. One, Bure test. Bure test. And two, Milon test. Please take note of it. It's not mil million, it's Milon test. And three, Zanto poetic. Poet Protect, protect solution. Santo, protect test or reaction. Bure test. When you want to be involved in Bure test, there are two chemical reagents. One, caustic soda. And two, Copper sulfate. Copper sulfate solution. I want you to know this. When you want to test for, for protein, the condition must be alkaline. So put colloidal solution of protein, which can be albumin of the egg or meat extract in a test tube. Then add caustic soda to provide alkaline solution, uh, alkaline condition. It is when this alkaline condition is now provided that copper sulfate will now be added. Mind you, that protein can be protein, but accidentally that protein must have been converted to peptone. So in the case that that peptone, that protein has been converted to peptone, if it is peptone that is there, a pink coloration Will be formed if copper sulfate is added. But if it is the real protein that is still there, a violet coloration will be formed. Please take note of this. During Bure test, there are two chemical reagents caustic soda. We also call this caustic soda sodium hydroxide and copper two sulfates. So if it is protein, violet coloration. If it is peptone, V pink coloration. For Milon test, there is only one test, one reagent, which is Milon reagent, which is named after the man that got out the test. So what happened is that just get out a colloidal solution of protein, which can be albumin or meat extract, and had Milon reagent. A deep red coloration is formed. Please take note of all the colors. Deep red coloration under Milon test. Now, under Bure test, violet coloration for, peptone, for protein and pink coloration for peptone. Now, that to pre, uh, protein test or reaction. Under this that to pre, uh, protein test, there are two reagents, chemical reagents needed. One, nitric acid. Please take note of that and two, ammonia solution. Ammonia solution. If you don't use ammonia solution, you can use ammonium hydroxide. Please take note of that. You can use ammonium hydroxide. Now, what you just need to do, put the colloidal solution of protein in a test tube. Then you add 
concentrated nitric acid. When that concentrated nitric acid is added, a white precipitate is formed. On eating, this white precipitate changed to what? To yellow. And when it is now changed to yellow, then you cool it and add ammonia solution or ammonium hydroxide. It is then that that color will be deepened to orange. Mind you, when nitric acid is added, the color that is on is white precipitate. After eating it, it will turn yellow. Then ammonium hydroxide or ammonia is now added, it will now give you orange coloration. Then we now move on to test for fat and oil. Now, when you want to test for fat and oil, we have two main tests. One, the use of Sudan 3 solution. Sudan 3 solution. Please, another name for this Sudan 3 solution is osmic acid. Please take note of that. We call it what? Osmic acid. What we just need to do now, this osmic acid or Sudan 3 solution, just get, just put two or three centimeter cube of oily solution in a test tube and then add Sudan 3 solution or osmic acid. A deep red coloration is formed. But how can we distinguish between fat and oil? Because the two of them will give you deep red coloration when Sudan 3 or osmic acid solution is now added. Now, if it is oil that is there, when you boil the solution, that deep red coloration will turn black. But if it is fat, it will still remain deep red coloration. That is how to distinguish it. Now, we now look at number two, translucent set. Translucent. Translucent test. This is just the use of filter paper. Let the that oil or fat drop on filter. So that paper will be translucent. That is a common one. So take note. When you want to test for food, know the chemical reagent, know the color. Once you they mention the chemical reagent, you know the type of food they are talking about. For simple reduced sugar, we only use Befeli solution or Benedict solution and the color is deep red or brick red coloration and the condition must be neutral. For complex reduced sugar, you use dilute 8 hydrochloric acid which is to break the glucosid bond that joins the two monosaccharides. Then caustic soda or sodium hydroxide is added to provide, to neutralize the effect of that Acidic condition, which is being provided by the dilute hydrochloric acid to make it neutral, it is then that fairly solution or Benedict solution will be added. It will now give you a deep red or orange red or brick red as if you are testing for simple reduced sugar. For starch, I told you that you use iodine solution, which will turn starch to blue black. Starch will make it to turn to what? Blue black. Now, for protein, we have three tests. Buret test. For buret test, we use chemical reagents. Two chemical reagents. Sodium hydroxide or caustic soda and copper two sulfate. So it is the caustic soda that first of all be added to provide alkaline condition. Then copper two sulfate will be added. If it is protein that is there, it will change, it will give you violet coloration. If it is peptone, it will give pink coloration. For million test, we use million reagent. So, uh, if milloy reagent is added to that protein, it will give you deep red coloration. Now, we have them to protect test or reaction. We use two chemical reagents, concentrated nitric acid and ammonia solution or ammonium hydroxide. So, it is concentrated nitric acid that first of all be added to that protein source. Now, by the time concentrated nitric acid is added, a white precipitate is formed, 
On eating that wet prep state, it turns what? Yellow. Then on cooling it, you now add ammonia solution or am ammonium hydroxide, which you now turns yellow. Or uh, turns orange. That is for protein. So for fat and oil, we have to study the use of osmic acid or sudatri solution. So when sudatri solution is used on oil or fat, now a, a, a deep red coloration is formed. But to distinguish between fat and oil, if it is oil that is there, when you boil that deep red coloration, it turns black. But if it is fat, it will, remain, it will still remain deep red coloration. Thank you. Have a lovely day.